Hello folk, how you doing? Scotty, Adam something has made a video on libertarianism, or shall I say right libertarianism. So what led me to this conclusion? Why do I think that libertarians, uh, right libertarians to be specific, are fascists? Libertarianism is libertarianism. It's nothing at all to do with fascism. Fascism is inherently collectivist. It subordinates individuals' rights and liberty. It's down the road of the state becoming the main element of the economy, controlling every aspect of your life whether it's over social policies or everything they do with the economy, whereas libertarianism is the exact opposite of everything that stands for. And of course I'm not talking about every single person who identifies as libertarian. That's the thing, just because you call yourself something it doesn't necessarily make it so. It's just like how socialists try to call themselves libertarians but they're not, because socialism's all about control which is the antithesis of everything liberty stands for. Or even right libertarian. But I did notice some worrying trends among people who call themselves that. And also, libertarianism has become an integral part of the Republican Party, which is a far-right party by any measure. Well, this is the problem, Mace, the Republican Party, in other words, the GOP, is made up of that of neocons, which is your neoconservatives, and you've got your paleocons as well. However, they are few and far between, and it's the same thing with the libertarians. If there are any libertarians within that of the GOP, then they're few and far between. So there appears to be some definite connection between uh, the far-right and right libertarianism. But why? I mean, theoretically, they're supposed to be on different ends of the spectrum. You know, right-wing authoritarians wanting more government control, <laughs> at least in theory, and uh, right libertarians wanting less. Well, there lies the issue, because those typically on the far right, depending on how you define the left and right spectrum, typically believe in that strong government intervention, so they're not at all like that of the right libertarians, as he tries to put it, but this is the point. It depends on how you define the whole left and right spectrum. It's the very reason why I don't bother with the left and right, just argue with that of the individual individualism and collectivism thing, simply because then they've got no way out. He's trying to basically say, these people are on the far right, and the thing I've got to point out here is that the left are very, very good at manipulating things, and therefore anybody that opposes socialism, they've simply labelled anybody who opposes government as that of the far right, and they've tried to conflate that of fascism for some odd reason, like he stated at the start, and he's trying to conflate that with the far right. Well, how do you work that logic out? How can you oppose government and be in favour of fascism at the same time, you see the logical contradiction. When I say right-wing libertarian, I don't mean people who fit the definition of right-wing libertarian. Well, this is the issue because he's going on about right libertarianism. Like I say, I mean, just because somebody calls themselves something doesn't necessarily make it so. I mean people who identify as right-wing libertarian. And so, do the following names sound familiar to you? Richard Spencer. Surprise, surprise, folk. Richard Spencer. I mean, how on earth can he draw to the logical conclusion that this socialist, this out and out anti individualist. No individual has a right outside of a collective community. This pro collectivist is a libertarian. Uh, I'm, f I'm fine with that. Uh, international socialism. Uh, I'm, to be honest, uh, I, I'm not totally opposed to socialism when when done right. Milo Yiannopoulos. This is a guy who's basically a conservative. He's not a libertarian. Gavin McInnes. So Gavin McInnes is somebody who basically, I've not really watched much of his content, but as far as I'm concerned, he came across as a conservative. I could be wrong about that. Tim Gionet, aka Baked Alaska. Again, I can't really pass comment on this particular individual because I don't really know who he is. However, I would imagine if he's anything at all like that of Gavin McInnes, I wouldn't really call him a libertarian. Stefan Molyneux. So Stefan Molyneux is someone debatable. He started out as a strong libertarian and whether or no he's taken on these certain conservative policies or whatever. Again, to me it's all down to a question of scale because classical liberals are classified as libertarians in my eyes. Ben Shapiro. He is someone who is a conservative, so I don't know where you're getting that logic from. All of these people are far-right demagogues. All of them have either started out or are currently identifying as libertarian. So you're saying that they're far right and they're somehow libertarian at the same time? That doesn't even add up. A libertarian is a libertarian. And so it seems to me that there is such a thing as the libertarian alt-right pipeline. And why is that? Well, if you're a libertarian, allegedly, chances are you will be against programs such as affirmative action, state welfare, anti-discrimination legislation. Now do we see a pattern here? 
In general, it seems to me that far writers and libertarians have an awful lot in common. So first of all, it's you that's basically labelled them as far right. Know them themselves, no unless it's somebody like Richard Spencer, and that's a bit of an exception. This is the point because it goes back to the initial argument that you're trying to correlate them with fascism. Well, fascism's about strong government control over every aspect of their life. If they're supporting such a position against government and supporting that of libertarianism to any varying extent, in other words, supporting free markets, how then can you? correlate them to that of fascism, which is collectivism. And that's because they both believe in this thing called personal responsibility. So you lefties are very good at labelling everybody in the far right as basically being fascist. And if that's the case then, then that contradicts everything you say because, you know, fascism doesn't stand for personal responsibility, you know, the state controlling every aspect of your social life and everything to do with the economy. So your economic life, you're subservient to that of the state. That's no personal responsibility. Personal responsibility responsibility then would correlate to that of libertarians. So there's a contradiction there. You're saying that these people would oppose such action by government and control of government over their life, but then you've labelled them as far right, and at the same time you would label anybody in the far right as being fascist, and you've even said at the start that you somehow correlate the so-called right-wing libertarians with that of this, you know, fascism. This is why you're not all the shop. You're contradicting yourself. Individual responsibility means that we should solve big problems through small individual changes instead of systemic approaches. Well that's the thing, it really depends on what you mean in terms of the big problems that you're speaking about. That's the first thing that you need to elaborate on. What are these so-called big problems that need society collectively to deal with? And how can individual, you know, responsibility no deal with such an issue? And the key difference between that of those who support libertarianism and those who are collectivists, that is to say we believe in dealing with things and helping one another through voluntary contribution, through voluntary voluntary action, whereas you socialists don't. You socialists are morally bankrupt. In other words, what you believe in is through the use of force and so-called helping people, whether it's through taxation or whatever, because you've got somehow this negative view of mankind. In other words, you have this view of mankind that we're so greedy, we're so self-centred, that we just wouldn't help one another in the absence of government, so we need to use government to force the issue. The system isn't broken, the individual people are. You know, if you have 10,000 black people living in a ghetto somewhere, the systemic solution to black poverty would be targeted social programs, improving the infrastructure, enforcing laws against discrimination. I don't know how you can say that even after what Thomas Sowell has pointed out himself about affirmative action and all the rest of it. Affirmative action. Is that, is that we ought not to be doing this? You know, there, there are various uh, laws and policies that benefit one group at the expense of another. But I think uh, affirmative action has the distinction of being one that it harms everybody, though in different ways. And so you, 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 there, there, there's a lot of evidence that there are black kids who have all the qualifications to be successors in college, who nevertheless are failures because they are systematically mismatched with institutions whose standards they don't meet, even though they may meet the standards of 80 or 90 percent of the colleges in America. I remember, I first aware of this when I was teaching at Cornell, and I found that half the black students at Cornell were on some kind of academic probation. And so I went over to the administration building and looked up the SATs of these students. The average black student at Cornell at that time scored at the 75th percentile. Which and, is pretty darn good. Yes. And so that means that in, that in most colleges in this country, they would have no trouble, and many of them would be on the dean's list. But at Cornell, the average uh, liberal arts student at that time was in the 99th percentile. And, and, when, you, when, you, and when you're teaching the stu students like that, uh, you teach at a pace that most people of any race cannot keep up with. And how the social welfare policies actually created the problem with the single parent households. What about family structure, Tom? Again, I'm quoting you. Most black children were being raised in two parent families in 1960. 30 years after the liberal welfare state, the great majority of black children were being raised by single parents. Pat Moynihan, Patrick Moynihan publishes the Moynihan Report in 1965, yes. and he's alarmed because the uh, illegitimacy rate among black families mm. is 25% then. Now, among whites, it's over a third, yes. Hispanics, it's over half, and among African Americans, it's over 70%. What's going on there? Well, this is how, again, this too, you find the same thing in Britain, you find it in uh, France, in Norway, you find it in the Western world. 
Uh, in, in fact, uh, the dissolution any, of the family structure. Oh yeah, there are any number of, of uh, Western nations where forty percent of the children are, uh, are raised with with only one parent. Right. Uh, at the extremes, uh, I, I, I compared to. Asian uh, countries. Uh, at the extremes, uh, Iceland, it's uh, two out of three uh, children are born are raised in a single parent home. Uh, in South Korea, it's one out of 66. Wow. Wow. And so, wh wh that's the welfare state? What yes. You're creating a situation where if the man stays there, the, the government will not give, them, give the woman welfare. Uh, and if he leaves, he, he, uh, it will. And so they're, pay, they're paying, they're, when you pay people not to get married, more people don't get married. And yet, for whatever reason being, you seem to think that helped the black community. Unbelievable. Whereas what Ben, personal responsibility Shapiro would do, is he would roll up in his Bentley and tell those people to start a business or something. Well, Ben Shapiro is actually right in what he says in terms of people getting work or whatever. However, what you completely ignore and what you're trying to paint the free market to be, is almost as if to say it's self-centered and that people don't care about one another. That, oh, free market healthcare means that it's only affordable for the rich and it's going down this road of ignoring that charitable operations exist etc as if to say that people who can't afford would just be left to die there in the streets it's basically your rhetorical baseless claims that doesn't even live up to the real world of history and that's because if you subscribe to the idea of personal responsibility then chances are you believe that the system we have currently is fine or mostly fine i don't say this to be mean but if anybody finds this system the day you know perfectly and morally acceptable then they themselves are part of the problem and they're no libertarians at all so I don't know where you're going with this argument because if anybody supports this system they're subconsciously supporting that of corporatism where through all the heavy government intervention through all the socialism being introduced into the economy all you've seen is the private sector costs soaring out of control because of government restricting productive output and basically creating a problem where the market can be as competitive so in other words through government over regulating the private sector even when it came to American healthcare and through the intervention of restricting access in terms of supply. You've seen that with the American Medical Association monopoly and of course they're restricted by closing down all the medical schools. It most certainly is not acceptable today even when you talk about all the government subsidies through socialism that drove that of the American education system's costs through the roof and they tried to blame that on the market. Reason for why there's so many issues today is because of the fact that you're living in the absence of a free market economy. So a libertarian does not believe that today's system is morally acceptable and I don't know how you could correlate that with someone like that of Ben Shapiro who basically supports the free market. And so the problems don't lie in the institutions, they lie in the individual people. Hey, would you look at that? Sounds like these right-wing libertarians really want to conserve the current system. Wow, I wonder if there's a political movement dedicated to that exact goal. So earlier you called them a libertarian and then of course you're going down the road of conservatism. Conservatism isn't as black and white as that. You know, you've got conservatives who do believe and support that of the free market. And that of course you could look at Ben Shapiro. This is the issue because if anybody's supporting this current system and if you're talking about the so-called conservatives that support that, they're no true conservatives. What they're called is neoconservatives. A neoconservative is essentially someone who's a corporatist. So yeah, basically if we follow the idea of personal responsibility, we end up invariably with conservative social policies. That doesn't even make sense. You know, you've got libertarians who believe in libertarian social policies and that of personal responsibility. You don't even make rational sense. Quite a coincidence, isn't it? So if the um, darkies get too uppity in Detroit that they're poor and they have no opportunities, well, it's their problem. They're just lazy. They don't want to work. And if some soy-chugging cocked lefty points out that, hey, by the way, there's been systemic discrimination against black people, redlining policies, ramming highways through neighborhoods. So this goes down the road of this myth of the systemic racism or whatever, and this whole thing of discrimination and a lack of opportunity or whatnot. You're using today's e economy and you're not even speaking about that of a free market economy but if you were to speak about that of a free market economy where you've got strong opportunity in the marketplace for what one business does not give then another business is more than willing to in competition to provide for what that business is not so this is the issue because you talk about discrimination I believe that businesses do have the right to freely discriminate that's their personal choice it's down to the 
you know, individual's choice what they want to do for their business, but that doesn't mean to say that they're going to benefit from it. That's the whole part of liberty. You know, the disproportionate incarceration of black people for non-violent drug crimes breaks up families and ruins communities. All of these concerns can be just hand-waved, dismissed with personal responsibility. Because you can just tell them, ha, well, liberal, uh, you say, uh, let's say that black people are, let's say, discriminated against. But uh, have you heard about this thing called uh, personal responsibility? Hmm? Yep, they can just they can just move or they can just create a business. They can just, uh, let's say, stop being poor. Well, maybe if you actually freed up the market and moved towards a capitalist system, maybe we wouldn't have this problem today where, thanks to all your socialist government interventionism, you've not only restricted the market in terms of competition, you've restricted the employment opportunity and made it more difficult for them, you've drove their cost of living through the roof and then you expect them to make something of themselves after doing that. And talking of which, a prime example of that is the $15 minimum wage where you've made it even more difficult for them to even find work. Of course, when it comes to you socialists, you seem to think that you can argue with the science of economics. You think you can argue with the fact that, of course, in economics, you've got the laws of supply and demand and that this is something you can just brush aside. If they want to, but they don't, what does this mean about them? Right, so basically all social issues are channeled back onto the individual. If you see a bunch of black folk in a ghetto, your first question will not be what system produced this inequality, but rather how come all these people are so lazy? And uh, oh boy, does this result in uh, some interesting follow-up questions. You know, how come all these black people seem to be unable to succeed in this uh, meritocratic fair society created by white people? I wish it was as something as meritocratic, but however, we're not living under a free market economy. We're living under the type of system today where you're rewarding failure and punishing success. Is it a cultural problem or more of a um, biological problem? Hey, would you look at that? From one of the biggest foundational principles of libertarianism, we have organically arrived at white nationalist talking points. How on earth did you draw to the logical conclusion that you're talking about libertarianism when you were speaking about today's economy and something anti-capitalist? And then, of course, you're speaking about this to do with whiteness or something like that. It's got nothing at all to do with libertarianism. And so, if you are a person with empathy and a good understanding of the world, you realize that currently, in certain areas of life, especially in America, systemic change is needed to bring about more happiness and better outcomes. So you speak about that of better outcomes, etc., but how the hell do you expect to achieve that in the United States of America. Systemic changes of what exactly? Are you one of these people stupid enough to think that the United States of America is a capitalist economy today, despite the fact that your private sector is overregulated by the state? Socialism's already created a massive problem in healthcare costs, the education costs, and created a massive problem in a massive soaring debt crisis and all sorts. Despite the social welfare policies that created the single parent households and whatnot, you seem to think that mere socialism is the solution to your problems. On a question of scale, you show me economies that have got better outcomes than that of Singapore, that is a relatively strong free market, despite the fact of having government ownership of housing or whatever. And that requires state social policies, anti-discrimination laws, affirmative action even, welfare programs, which will also go to a lot of non-white people due to their socio-economic circumstances. So you seem to believe through all these social welfare policies and stuff like that, even although it was the problem of the single parent households and whatnot, the very fact that it contributed to the very serious debt crisis that you've got today, you seem to think that that's better than the poor. How the hell is it by making a dependent class? And how the hell are you creating wealth by division? You can't create wealth by division. You can't multiply wealth by division. Wealth is created through productivity, through the freedom to produce, in order to bring costs of living down in all sorts. But you won't allow that. In today's America, white people seem to have most of the power. And if you tolerate the status quo, or <laughs> who knows, maybe even support it, then it is quite simply in your best interest to side with political forces that are all about maintaining the current status quo. And would you look at that, libertarianism does exactly that. How on earth did you draw to the logical conclusion that this is libertarianism despite the fact that the government is heavily involved in the economy? Capitalism is about the separation of the economy from government. That's what libertarians support. You don't live under capitalism today. Capitalism is about individualism. Individualism is about the free market economy. That's what individualism defines. And how the hell can you say that libertarians support today's system when it's corporatism, where the government is rewarding failure and punishing success, where the government has forced people into a 
collective group and force them to collectively pay for the losses of others. The key word there is collectively, not individualism, collectively forced to pay for the losses of others. What about the very fact that you've got an over-regulated private sector? Since when did libertarians support that? I mean, honest to God, people like you are so irrational. So this is libertarianism from a social perspective, acting as an ideological platform for all kinds of unsavoury folks on the far right. But hey, you might interject, libertarianism is not just that. It also has a lot to say about economics. It wants to free the markets, it wants more freedom for everyone, freedom to do business, freedom to buy or sell whatever they want. It's all about achieving liberty, free of any government meddling. Hence the name, libertarianism. It all sounds nice, but here's the problem. Hierarchy is inherent in capitalism. Your boss can be an incompetent dipshit who just got parachuted into his position through his relatives or something and still have all the power over you while you have no power over them. There's two things that you completely ignore there is the fact that it's the consumer that dictates and determines whether a business is going to be successful or not. The second thing is the fact that you talk about the capitalist but you completely ignore the fact that each and every single one of those individuals who choose to work for his company also have the freedom themselves to choose whether they want to go and start up their own private business because there's nothing stopping them from doing so. It's something that you socialists always choose to ignore. But those individuals who work for the company have the freedom to leave the company and go and start up their own private business. They apply for the job. It's an application process. And then there's a job interview process. So in other words, the capitalist goes through an interview to see whether they're going to employ them or not. It's a voluntary contract. Voluntary contract means both come to an agreement. The agreed contract is that the individual agrees to work for that individual so they don't have complete power over them because if they had complete power over them the individual wouldn't have the choice to leave the company and go and do their own thing and it's that person that created the business then of course they run you then of course they're the one dictating to you what you do in, your, in his business he created the business what the hell are you expecting? and they can decide about your livelihood with a stroke of a pen Capitalism is also coercive. What if your boss is a total, emotionally abusive dipshit who just makes employees' life a living hell? I've had those bosses before. It's not fun and I ended up resigning in all situations. So it was coercive, but you chose to leave. So you're honestly that ignorant or that pampered, you honestly think that you can walk into somebody's private business. It's a bit like somebody walking into somebody's own house and then questioning them over them dictating to you. Of course they're allowed to dictate to you in their own house because it's their house. It's their property. It's no different with your business. And you call it coercive. Please elaborate to me how you applying for the job and agreeing with a contract. Basically, voluntary signing and agreeing with the contract to work for the company. How is that coercive when you chose to leave the company? <sighs> the stupidity of people like you is unreal. But only because I had plenty of options. But what if I didn't? I would be screwed. When you don't have that many options, that's your own fault for restricting the market now and then, isn't it? That's your own fault for opposing the free market economy. That's your own fault for opposing the capitalist system. Your fault for all your socialist government interventionism towards this mixed economy and then trying to blame it all on capitalism for the lack of opportunity. I would have had to show up to work, take all the abuse with a smile on my face and then pray to God I don't get fired because if I do, I'm sleeping on the bridge. Right, so it seems to me that right-wing libertarianism is not really concerned with, you know, liberty, and it's only used as a facade for the true agenda, which is the creation and maintaining of hierarchies. Do you expect to just walk into somebody's property and walk into their house and them dictating to you and you're staying the night or whatever? Do you honestly think you can just walk into anybody's property and tell them how to live their life? Is that honestly how you think things work? It's no different with a private business, son. The very fact that somebody owns a private business, yes, they do get to determine how it's run because they're the one that created it. Now, if you want to take away the ownership of an individual, taking away the liberty of an individual, you're basing everything off of today, today's economy when of course there's a lack of opportunity and there's a soaring cost of living and you're trying to blame that and correlate that with libertarianism and then say, well, libertarians don't believe in liberty. You're not even living under libertarianism. And that we call right-wing conservatism, which happens to be a precursor to right-wing fascism. Oh my god, man. 
How did you draw to the logical conclusion that fascism, a branch of socialism that involves the state completely controlling the private sector, where the state through that of strong government regulation gives the state the power to collectively control the means of production. Socialism. How did you draw to the logical conclusion that this was equivalent to that of libertarians who support that of strong deregulation of the economy? <sighs> I can't even fathom just how dangerously stupid people like you are. So folk, I think you understand where this argument has gone. He doesn't even understand the first thing I taught today about what fascism is, or even libertarianism for that matter. There are countless people that follow people like that and believe the utter pish that they spout. Anyway folk, if you've got anything you'd like to add in, comment in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video, share the video, and of course I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you for watching, and shall talk to you later. Cheers.